Uh, thank you all for coming today. And the purpose outside here will basically just be giving you a lay of the land as to what you will be seeing when you go inside the shop. Uh, and we'll start with what I know most of you have already seen many, many times, but we've got a couple of model, models here that'll help orient you to what you're seeing. Uh, to, to my right here, this is again a model of Pier E2 of the main span of the new Bay Bridge. And it's showing you the alignment of several of the structural features that sit right on top of the cap beam of Pier E2. Uh, simply put, there are four what we call bearings and four shear keys. The bearings are the orange elements, the shear keys are the blue elements that you see on top. And the issue that we've been dealing with primarily are the fractures of the bolts that we saw at two of the shear key locations at Pier E2. So the bolts that are broken are the ones at the base of the shear key, which you can see here uh, below the eastbound deck and also below the westbound deck. That would be these two shear keys here, which we refer to as shear keys one and two. And the work that's going on here is a large part of what is necessary to replace the function of the bolts at these two locations. All of the locations at Pier E2 continue to perform as intended to perform just fine. So you've heard a lot about the saddle options at these two locations, and we've got a more detailed view here off to the left. And I think what I'll do now is turn it over to Bill Casey and I'll let him run you through what is involved in the saddle retrofits and primarily the elements of the fabrication of those saddle elements that you're going to be seeing when you go inside the shop. So Bill? As Tony was describing, here is a blown up version of this piece right here of what we're doing in the shop. Again, these are the bearings, the shear key right here, and here's the saddle system. And if I can pull, this is the concrete jack we'll be casting on it to tie this whole thing together. Pull this off, uh, model you're very familiar with. This is the whole system itself. You have the upper saddle here, the lower saddle here, and all the post tensioning used to hold this down. And basically, to, to replace the functional rods, this saddle just pushes the shear key straight down and gets that nice tight clamping force at the top of the cap. It's pushed down and pulled down right here with these, these tendons right here. They pull it straight down. They go through the lower saddle to the upper saddle to get that clamping force right back where those, those bolts no longer are. And then the orange here, blue, green, uh, this off-white color, and blue here, this is all additional pulse tensioning used to make this concrete cap one massive monolithic piece to tie it all as one to support this tie-down force. So what you're gonna see in the shop today, you'll see the fabrication of the lower saddle and the upper saddle comes in two parts. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Jason Grimlick, right over here to my right, is gonna take you through and show you exactly what's going with all that fabrication work. Working in combination with all that post tensioning, is this is the massive amount of rebar that goes out there to make all this work and make it monolithic. That's your post tension ducts right here. You saw right here, more of those, those vertical tendons right here to pull it down. And this is to give you a representation of what this will look like out in the field before we cast concrete. So it's one massive monolithic structure used to hold the whole shirky in place. This to, is to retrofit. This is meant to replace the functionality of those bolts. All that. All that, yes. And what this does is makes it, um, when, you, when you put the saddle on and you pull it down nice and tight, this combines it with the concrete to make a monolith. They act as one big piece of concrete. And this is a strand, just to give you a feel for it. This is a piece of strand. It'll go up and over and around the top of the saddle to pull it down. Now, of course, I can't bend this. I'm not that strong. Jason might be. But, uh, but it gives you a feel. When you put it on full scale, the size of the cap, and, I, and most of you have seen in the field, that strand will go over the top and bend over just fine. Um, basically, we've broken the saddles up into what we call the upper saddle and the lower saddle. When you go inside the shop, you will see a lot of basically U-shaped pieces that are layers of this upper saddle. This is actually being fabricated in independent layers, and you will notice that some of those layers have notches in them. Those notches are actually the troughs where these cables will be run. They'll go through that uh, and then pulled around through the ducts into the anchorages. Then you will see some smaller pieces that are half a U, basically, just have a little slight curve. Those are the lower saddle pieces. So that's what you'll see. You'll see the upper saddle in layers, the lower saddle in layers, and a few other odds and ends associated primarily with the lower saddle. So with that, um, I would suggest that we get inside so you guys can actually see the work that's going on. This is just an industrial roll. And uh, what we're doing is rolling the three inch thick side saddle piece. It's taking 90,000, I don't know, 90 tons of force right now to roll that three inch thick section uh, to get to the required uh, dimensions that we need to make the side saddle. Okay, let's go ahead. Did you guys get enough shots of this? Any questions with it? I'll take your silence as a yes. We're gonna move. These are the actual saddles that you're gonna see. 
when we're outside looking at the model, they have the blue sections that go up and over where the cables go through. Three inches thick. That's three inches thick. Three inches thick. Yeah, you got to look at this side view right here. That actually is the same as the plates that are on the other side. You notice how the plate looks real rusty, right? Yeah. We had to heat relieve the stress that was put in here from the roll. When you roll three inch thick material, it's flat plate, it's rolled out flat, right? Yeah. So once you start putting it in the rolls, it induces a lot of strain into that. So half of it, if you look at three inch thick, inch and a half materials under uh, compression, the other half's under tension. It takes a lot of rolling back and forth to get it to meet that dimensional tolerance of that yeah. curve that we're looking at. Once we meet that tolerance, we have to go ahead and heat relieve it. So there's an oven on the other side of the shop on this side of that glass wall where we actually take this material on these uh, fixtures, we put them in an oven at 1200 degrees for 24 to 30 hours where we go ahead and bake it at that to relieve that stress in there. What we're doing right now is we actually have a, uh, I forgot the diameter of that, that cutter head that's in there, but it's moving at about 30 inches a minute and it's just going across putting those original troughs in that we saw just a little while ago on the one with the steps. So what they do is they trough it out across, it's all CNC machine, computer numeric controlled. Then once they're done troughing out a certain section on the top, it'll come in and start individually cutting those one eighth inch steps that we saw within each trough section going down. And that's where the saddle or the, the tendons will be That held. is where the tendon is gonna, is gonna lay in there and go across that. Uh, how many tendons will be in there? 27 per each trough. Okay. And there are how many troughs? Uh, well, there's like probably each, each one of these yeah. bowed pieces, there's... 20? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the way that it works is we're going to have multiple of these upper and lower saddle sections. They're going to be stacked on top of each other, sandwiched down, and then welded out. He's going to come engage it and start making a pass right now in front of you. Cool. So this dimension that we have right here has to be cut. So just bring it down, take a pass after pass to remove that uh, volume of material. Yeah. Will this be smooth or will it be rough like this? That's that's actually smooth. No. That, okay. If you if you walked up to the other side and put your hand across yeah. that, that's well within our roughness tolerance. Right. This is just two components of six yeah. plates. Right. But this section is the lower to this being the upper. Yeah. So what'll happen is you look at how this has the machining on the inside. This piece right here is actually going to clamshell over the top of that, right. and there's going to be another piece sitting on top of that. So you'll actually have four of these sitting together stacked up. 